Hey everyone and welcome to Church Online at Metter United Methodist Church. Uh, I want to thank Cheryl Williams for providing us with uh, that call to worship. Sweet, sweet spirit. It is so good to hear Cheryl on the piano again. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed it as well. I think you did. As you're hopping on uh, today, go ahead and like and share this video. It has never been easier to share the gospel than by liking and sharing this video and inviting others to be a part of our service today. And so go ahead and do that. Uh, let others know you're watching. Invite them to be a part of this. I want to let you know that our, we have uh, updated our website, the homepage, the very first page that you get to, metterumc.com, has everything you need for today's service. There you'll find the connection card uh, for you to fill out. Let us know that you were worshiping with us. You'll find a link to the YouVersion Bible app event section where you can find all these information, all, this, all the links, our giving link, connection card, live stream, everything is there, uh, along with sermon notes, scripture, uh, again, links for everything. Uh, also on the homepage is a link to for you to register for our in-person worship. We're offering that at 11 a.m. on Sundays in the sanctuary. We need you to register uh, before you come on Sundays. And uh, so th everything is on our website homepage uh, so you can find it easily. So I hope that you will check that out, and I hope that helps in, uh, in navigating all that we need to navigate online. I want to remind you on, on Wednesday nights at 6.30, I am continuing my study on what the Bible says about uncertainty. And I hope you'll join me at Wednesday night at 6.30 on Facebook and on YouTube and our website. And of course, if you're not able to make it on Wednesdays at 6.30, it is there uh, afterwards uh, for you to check out. Uh, we're going to be doing Lesson 4 this week, what the Bible says about uncertainty. Uh, on that connection card that you were asking you to fill out, you can uh, put, out, put any prayer requests. We hope that you'll do that. I read those. I'm praying for you. I know that we have many who are in need of prayer right now, who are recover, recovering from surgery, uh, procedures, those who are sick, either with COVID or with just uh, sinuses and all the junk that's going around. We want to pray for you. Uh, I'm praying for you. And as we enter into this time of prayer, um, let, let us, let us rem remind ourselves that there is a sweet, sweet spirit in this place that I'm in right now, but wherever you are, the Holy Spirit is with you right now. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Father, we thank you so much for um, your many blessings. We thank you so much for... Um, the body of Christ, the fellowship of believers, where we are gathered together right now across screens and across miles, across fiber that gives us internet, across Wi-Fi that gives us internet. Lord, it's amazing what you are able to do. Lord, may we hear you uh, freshly today. May, may you draw us closer to you and closer to each other. May our minds, our hearts, our ears be open to you this day. We lift up to you those around us who are in special need of prayer, whether it be sickness or recovering those who are mourning. We, we, we lift them up to you today. We pray that your Spirit would guide us as we worship you this morning. We ask all these things in, the, in your Son's holy and precious name, the name of Jesus, and we come to you in the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. say together the historic affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hey kids, we've got another uh, kids moment for you this morning. Um, as we started last week, we've got a memory verse for you. It's our passage from Ephesians 2. And so in just a moment, there's going to be a video that pops up and it's going to give you some time to look over that video. Maybe you didn't uh, see it last week and so this is your first week. There's going to be a video uh, with the scripture. It pops up, then it's going to go away, then it's going to come back and you're going to have to fill in the holes and see if you can do it. So you've got one minute to memorize this verse.
Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through 9. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 16. When your words came, I ate them. They were my joy and my heart's delight. For I bear your name, Lord God Almighty. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Hey again, everyone. I am really excited about this new series we are launching today called Feasting on the Word. And we're going to talk about five ways to really enjoy the Bible. This morning is an introduction to this series, and then over the next five weeks, we're going to take a deep dive into these five ways to enjoy the Bible. So as we get going, I want you to think about something for me. I want you to think about the last great meal you experienced. What was the last meal you really enjoyed? Can you remember? Now, there are different ways to classify a good meal or several reasons why a meal is good. You can enjoy a meal simply based on the amount of food at the meal. I mean, it's hard to keep a southern boy away from a good buffet. I've been known to do some damage at a Golden Corral. Of course, none of that's been going on in months. Which leads me to another way to define a good meal. Maybe your last great meal was at your favorite restaurant. Again, there probably hasn't been a lot of that going on unless that restaurant has a drive-thru or you uh, got takeout. So the amount of food or the place you eat can make a meal really good. Maybe your last great meal was yesterday because it was home cooked. You're like, it doesn't matter that it's what it is as long as your wife cooked it or your mom cooked it or perhaps your dad. I don't want to make any stereotypes because, I mean, I make a mean screen, scrambled eggs uh, at my house. So your last great meal was that way because of who cooked it. It didn't really matter what was served. The cook just knows how to cook good food. And then there are are just certain kinds of foods that we really like. You could almost eat them every day because you love them so much. They are your favorite, and every time you eat them, that is a great meal. Again, this morning we're beginning to talk about feasting on the Word, enjoying the Bible. And just like we enjoy our favorite food or go to town on a buffet... As followers of Jesus, we are invited to feast on the Word of God. We are invited to fill up our souls on the Word. We're to have a hunger for the Scriptures that can only be met with more of the Scriptures. I love the picture that we get in Deuteronomy 6. This is historically known as the Shema, meaning hear. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. We'll get back to the idea of hearing next week, but the rest of our passage in Deuteronomy sets up this idea of feasting on the Word. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. This is what feasting on the Word looks like. Talk about God's Word. Pass it on to your children. Talk about it at home and along the road when you're lying down and when you get up. And if that wasn't enough, put God's Word around your wrist and put it around your head and And then put it around your door frame so that whether you're walking out or walking into your house, God's Word is there. Feasting on the Word. And here's the thing. Soon after our passage in Deuteronomy, God's people were getting ready to enter the promised land. God was preparing them to enter this new land. 
And this land was filled with other people. These other people worshipped other gods, many gods. In fact, that was the norm. Now, God was preparing His people who were saying that there was only one God who was God, and so God needed to prepare His people. God needed His people to feast on the Word. They needed to feast on God's Word day and night, wherever they went, because they were about to be surrounded. Surrounded by people who did not believe what they believed. There were going to be distractions. There was going to be temptations. And, and God's people needed to be prepared by feasting on God's Word. And listen, if you think about it, things are not that different. No, we don't have too many people worshiping wooden statues and claiming to worship multiple gods. But we do live in a world full of distractions and temptations. And indeed, we live in a world where we do worship idols. We worship things other than God, and that makes them an idol. We may not use those words or think of it in, in those terms, but that just makes them more dangerous. We're worshiping idols, and we don't even realize it. But anything that we place ahead of God is an idol. And I could sit here and list them all. Money, success, promotions, sports, clothes, style, technology, social media, politics. I could go on and on. Think of it this way. We're beginning today to talk about feasting on God's Word. That means there are probably many of us who are feasting on other things than the Bible. We're enjoying and digesting and soaking in other things at a greater pace than the Scriptures. For instance, how many of you watched more of the Democratic National Convention this week than you read your Bible? And that's not a slam on the Democrats because I know some of you Republicans watched it just to see what the other side was saying. Well, did you read your Bible this week more than you focused on politics? And in the same vein, how much news did you consume this week in comparison to the amount of verses you read? Or how much Instagramming or tweeting or Facebooking did you do this week versus the amount of Scripture you read? And as your pastor, I am not immune. At the beginning of this year, I read a book called How to Break Up with Your Phone. Yep, you heard me. I realized that I was too dependent on my phone to the point of addiction. And I can't recommend this book enough because it really did help me. The author realizes that we, we do need our phones, but we don't have to use them all the time. And so I started out this year loosening my dependence on my phone. But then guess what happened? COVID happened. And suddenly we were at home. Suddenly we couldn't go anywhere except online. Suddenly, everything, including church, got moved online. The internet, Facebook, social media. That was where people were and are. And so those practices that I had developed at the beginning of the year have sort of fallen to the wayside. So I need to work on what I'm feasting on. Because here's the thing. We're feasting on something. We're digesting and soaking in something. As followers of Jesus, I want us to feast on the Word of God. I want us to soak in God's Word like we hear about in Deuteronomy 6. Just think about where the church would be today if we are feasting on the Word of God the way we've done with social media or news or politics or sports or whatever craves our attention. This world would be transformed. It'd be more like heaven and a little less like earth. So what are we going to do about it? Well, I want us to be like Jeremiah. Jeremiah writes in Jeremiah 15, uh, verse 16, When your words came, I ate them. They were my joy and my heart's delight, for I bear your name, Lord God Almighty. Jeremiah was one of the prophets in the Old Testament. And here in this passage, I believe Jeremiah is recalling the moment God called him into ministry. Jeremiah describes that scene in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 9. 
Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. Jeremiah delighted in those words. He ate them. He feasted on them. And because of that, he was able to share God's word with God's people. Some of it good, some of it not so good. But Jeremiah delighted in God's word. He enjoyed the word of God. And I want us to enjoy God's word. And so we're going to talk about five different ways we can do just that. If you follow the daily text from Seedbed and J.D. Walt, you will recognize these five ways. They are five R's. And before I give them to you, you have to promise me something. You have to promise me you are going to come back each week and hear a little bit more about them. Just because I'm going to share with them at the beginning doesn't mean I'm going to give you everything you need to know. So I know I'm sort of giving you a spoiler here, but you got to come back and get the whole thing. Okay? So here we go. The first R is read. Yep, that was a given. The first way to enjoy the Bible is to read the Bible. And while that sounds simple, there are really different ways to read the Bible, and so we're going to talk about that next week. The next R is ruminate. Ruminate means to think deeply about something. So we talk about ruminating over the Scriptures. We're talking about more than just simply reading God's Word. This is where we get into meditating over the Scriptures. We sit over the Scriptures and let the Scriptures sit over us. Ruminate. Then we rememberize. That's the third R. And no, that is not an actual word. As I said, these five word R's come from J.D. Walt at Seedbed, and his son made up this word. But it conjures up the idea of memorization. But to rememberize goes deeper than simply memorizing Scripture. And, and we want to do that. We want to memorize Scripture. But when I think about memorization, I think I'm cramming for a test in college so I can make a good grade. And then as soon as the test is over, all that info leaves my brain to make room for the next test that I have to cram for. Instead, with Scripture, we want it to go deep in our minds and our souls. We want God's Word to stay in us. Remember us. The fourth R is research. This is where we really study God's Word. Again, it's one thing to read the words on the page, and then it's another to dig deep and try to understand the context and what it really means. And so we're going to talk about different ways and tools we can use to re research God's Word. Finally, we rehearse God's Word. We've read it, we've ruminated over it, we've memorized it, we've researched and studied it. Now it's time to do God's Word. We rehearse it. We live it out. That's the whole point, isn't it? We feast on God's Word so that we can do God's Word. That's how we follow Christ. Okay, so I've just laid it out for you. You know where we're heading over the next few weeks. You promised me you would come back. I need you to. Because there's one more thing I want us to do. And we need to do it together. I want us to feast on God's Word. I want us to read the entire New Testament together as a church. Now, don't tell me it's not possible. It's entirely possible. We have six plus weeks beginning Monday, August 24th. And each week has a catch-up day uh, day built in so you don't really have any excuses. I've even posted a Bible reading plan in our YouVersion event page where you can have the plan right there on your YouVersion app and mark it off each day. We're going to post a weekly schedule through email and social media so you know where we are each week and each day. Let's do this. Let's read through the New Testament together. Let's feast on God's Word. And as we learn about these five ways to enjoy the Bible, maybe we can put them into practice as we go along our reading plan. Again, let's do this. Will you join me? I'm excited about this series, and I'm excited about our time together. 
in a world where we can feast on a lot of different things, let us choose to feast on the Word of God. Remember, I love you. God loves you. Amen.